Well, hi, everybody. Glad you dropped by again. Good to see you. I have here my good friend, Chester. Hi, everybody. Good to see you, too. Now, Chester has been learning the Ten Commandments, and he has the first three memorized. I have, I have, I have. <laughs> now, Chester, do you think you're ready to share that information with our friends? Do you think you can say it by memory? I think so. Let's see. Commandment one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Excellent, Chester. Now, commandment two. This one's a little longer. Thou shalt not make before thee any graven image of anything that is found in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, but showing mercy unto thousands that love me and keep my commandments. Excellent, Chester. That sure was a long one. Commandment three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Exodus 20, verse 7. Fantastic work, Chester. Now, last week, we learned what is required by the third commandment. And do you remember any of that, Chester? Well, kind of, that we're to use the Lord's name in a holy and reverent manner. But if that's what's required, what is forbidden in the third commandment? Well, that's the next question in the catechism. And it's right here. What is forbidden in the third commandment? And what is forbidden or not allowed? Well, it says here, the third commandment forbids all profaning and abusing of anything whereby God makes himself known. But what does all that mean? Well, to profane something means to treat something holy as though it were common. It's to treat something or someone with disrespect. When people say the name of God in a common or disrespectful way, that is profaning it. You mean when someone says, oh, God. yeah, yeah, I get the picture. Or, oh, my, God. yeah, yep, yeah, I understand. When they're surprised or annoyed, it's profaning his name. Yes. Whenever we say good God's name, you know, if we say, oh, God, we should be praying to him. If we say, oh, my God, we should be praying to him. Not just saying it when we're surprised or annoyed and going, oh my God. No, that's not treating God's name with the respect it should, it deserves. We should never use God's name as a cuss word or even a casual word. Okay, so the third commandment pro forbids all profaning or abusing God's name. Well, what does abuse mean? I mean, I've heard of child abuse. And that's pretty bad. And, and drug abuse, that's bad. But what is abuse? Well, abuse means to use something for a bad purpose. When we pray to God, we're using God's name for a good purpose. When we talk about God, his love, and all that he has done in sending Jesus, his son, to die on the cross for our sins and, and raising him from the dead so that we could have eternal life, those are good things. When we, we talk about how God is, how God's great and how he's wonderful and that he's kind and caring, that's, that's using God's name in a good way. But if I drop a heavy jar on my toe and yell out the name of God out loud or of Jesus Christ, well, that is abusing the name of our Lord, not using it as it's meant to be used. But is it all that serious a sin to say the name of God in a careless way? Is it really that bad? They're just words, aren't they? Oh, but words are very important to God. In Leviticus chapter 24, verses 10 to 15, we read this account. Back, way back in the days of Moses, when the Israelites and Moses, they were traveling through the desert. It says that now the son of an Israelite woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel. And this Israelite's woman's son 
and a man of Israel fought each other in the camp. They got into a fight. And you know what happens when people fight? Sometimes they say really bad things to each other. And the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And so they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shelemeth, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. Then they put him in custody, that the mind of the Lord might be shown to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take outside the camp him who has cursed, and then let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him. Then you shall speak to the children of Israel, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely put to death. All the congregations shall certainly stone him, the stranger as well as him who was born in the land. When he blasphemes the name of the Lord, he shall be put to death. Whoa, that's really serious. Yes, it is. So you can see that God takes the use of his name very seriously. And even though we don't punish people that way today, it doesn't mean that abusing or profaning the name of God is any less serious a sin. Is it just saying the words God, Lord, or Jesus that we take the name of the Lord in vain? Is that it? No. It's also when we dishonor the things connected with God that his name is taken in vain. Remember, the third commandment forbids all profaning and abusing of anything whereby God makes himself known. Well, what are the things whereby God makes himself known? Well, for example, the Bible, for, for one, the Bible, through the Bible, God makes himself known. If we speak badly about the Bible, or if we treat the Bible in a careless manner by taking the Bible and, and throwing it on the floor, or ripping out the pages, uh, or spitting on it, we are dishonoring the name of the Lord who gave us that precious message. Okay, how else do we dishonor the Lord? Well, by lying about what God has said in his word. How do we do that? Well, by saying that God said something when he didn't, or God is, didn't say something when he did, or by saying the Bible says something when it doesn't, or saying the Bible doesn't say something when it does. Do people really do that? Do they lie about what God says? Oh, yes. Do you remember the story about uh, Jacob and Esau in Genesis 27? I think so. Well, you know, Isaac, here's, a, I'll just hold up a picture of it. Isaac was the, the father was blind and he was old and Jacob came to his father pretending that he was his brother Esau back from his hunting trip and that he had caught and prepared some meat for him. Well, Isaac thought, how could my son be back from the hunting trip so soon? Isaac did not know that Jacob and his mother had taken a couple of goats and had cooked it up for cooked them up for him. So when his father asked how he got for, back from his hunting trip so soon, Jacob replied, because the Lord your God brought it, that means the animal that he was hunting, the Lord your God brought it to me. Now, Jacob was lying. Jacob hadn't gone out hunting, and God hadn't given him that animal to catch. Jacob lied about what God had done. So Jacob was taking the name of the Lord in vain. That was bad. It sure was. Well, what happened? Well, Isaac blessed Jacob, and when Esau found out that Jacob got the blessing and Esau didn't, he was so angry he wanted to kill Jacob. So Jacob had to run away and escape. And he, had to, he ended up staying away from his homeland and from his family for 20 years. 20 years? Man, he shouldn't have lied in the name of God. He certainly should not have done that. So telling lies in the name of God is abusing and profaning his name. But are there other ways? Well, Connected, connected to um, lying about God is to swear falsely in his name. Swear falsely? What's that? Well, when someone is about to say something extremely important, they sometimes swear in the name of God. For example, in court, 
You might have seen this on television where when someone's called up to testify, they're asked to swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Now, that is an oath that they are swearing. And it means that you are calling upon God to punish you if you tell a lie. And that's wrong too? Oh, yes. That's another way in which we profane the name. That's another way that we profane the name of the Lord. You know, Leviticus chapter 19 verse 12 says, And you shall not swear by my name falsely, nor shall you profane the name of the Lord, uh, name of your God. I am the Lord. In fact, to guard against saying something false in God's name, we should avoid swearing oaths in the name of the Lord. We should try not to do it unless we absolutely have to. Really? Where does the Bible say that? Well, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 34 to 37, Jesus says, But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, and the great king is God. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. So saying the name of the Lord in a profane manner, lying in the name of the Lord, um, swearing oaths falsely in the name of the Lord, they're all dishonoring to him. Is that it? Well, there's a little bit more. Um, when we do work for the Lord or for his church as a gift for God in a shoddy manner, in a careless manner, or when the gifts we give to the Lord are second or third rate, well, that's despising the name of God. When we don't give the Lord our best, but give him the stuff we really don't want anyway, that's not honoring to the Lord's name. You know, in the Old Testament days, people were supposed to give good quality animals and their flocks for sacrifice. But some people didn't give a good animal. They didn't give their, they certainly didn't give their best. They sometimes gave animals that had broken legs or that were blind or sick. They were giving animals that they didn't want. And so they were glad to get rid of them. And you see Malachi chapter one, verses six to eight say this. It says, a son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence, says the Lord of hosts? To you priests who despise my name, so he's talking about the priests and saying by them offering gifts that are not very good, they're despising his name. You offer defiled food on my altar. But you say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably? Well, yeah, I guess it's not very respectful of God to not give him your best or to give him good stuff, but to give him crummy stuff. That's right. And it's the Lord of hosts that says this. So let's see. Giving God stuff that isn't any good is despising his name. And and uh, saying his name in a casual way is despising his name. And, and wow, there's a lot of ways to despise his name and, and profane his name. But are we done? We're done, right? No. Nope. Also, it, it's despising God's name when we worship other gods or participate in practices that m m displease God, make him mad. That's also dis dis dishonoring his name and abusing it. In Leviticus 20, it talks of people who would worship this false god named Moloch. And sometimes to please Moloch, they would take their babies, their children, and they would offer those babies as a sacrifice to Moloch. And they would set their babies on fire and kill them. Well, God hated that. God said, that is wrong. You, sh you must not do that. That is 
taking his name in vain. And here's, here's the verse about that. It says in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 3, I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from his people because he has given some of his descendants, that means children, to Molech, Molech is a false god, to defile my sanctuary and profane my holy name. Wow. Okay. False worship. Swearing falsely in the name of God. Lying about God. Saying God's name in a disrespectful way. Treating the things of God with disrespect. <sighs> there are so many ways in which we can dishonor God's name. I'll bet that his name is taken in vain somehow every single day. Well, you're right, Chester. It is. Isaiah chapter 52, verses uh, 5 and 6 say, And my name is blasphemed continually every day. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. Well, we people must be in real trouble. Yep, the human race is in real trouble. But there is some good news here. Because God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, including taking his name in vain. And then his son rose from the dead on the third day. If we repent of our abuse of the Lord's name and all of our other sins and believe in Jesus, God will give us eternal life. Wow, I'm so glad that Jesus saves us from all our sins. I am too. Well, that's all for today, everyone. I just want to leave you with this one last verse for us to remember when we think of the Lord's name. It's from Malachi chapter 1, verse 1b, and it says... For my name will be great among the, the nations, says the Lord of hosts. So even though people blaspheme God's name every day, people are also hallowing his name and honoring it. And someday when Jesus returns to this earth and judges the world, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and everyone will honor the name of the Lord someday. Well, I can't wait for that. And I want everybody to make sure you come back next week because, Lord willing, we'll meet again and learn about the reason for the third commandment, the reason for it. Well, I'd better not miss that one, even if I'm not hearing, just watching. That's right. But... I want everybody out there, you join us too. Now, don't miss next week's lesson. Thank you for dropping by. And remember, there are worksheets attached to the link below so that you can reinforce what you've learned today. God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Amen.